So I just received the Reebok Premium Road Plus version 6 from bstn.com. This pair is in the chalk vintage chalk and pure gray colorway. It's made of both synthetic and suede materials. The idea behind the Premier Road version 1 was to provide a shoe with premium materials with a focus on road running that provides cushioning and stability all at the same time. There were quite a few versions that were released in the same year. Some of them had the FSM foam. The one that I have today has DMX foam and they in fact had in 2003 DMX foam in the version 2. I'm not sure what the version 1 came with. I couldn't find much information on the version 1. The shoes weigh about a pound each. The width of the heel is approximately three and a half inches. The width of the forefoot is about four and three quarters inches. The height of the shoe from the heel tap to the outsole is approximately five inches. The height of the shoe from the forefoot to the outsole is about approximately three and a half inches. The stack height in the heel is approximately 38 millimeters, about one and a half inches. And in the forefoot, it's about one and a quarter inches, which is about approximately 32 millimeters, which would give this shoe approximately a six millimeter drop. So before I go into the review, I want to give a shout out to the website BSTN. That's where I purchased this shoe and it, they shipped it to me. It came very quickly, it came within five days. And I have to say it was pretty impressive because whenever I mail a package to Africa, it takes about two weeks to get there. But this got here within just a few days. The way I found out about BSTN is during the pandemic, uh, some people were trying to buy the Travis Scotts. And on Reddit, there was a whole thread and I happened to read the thread. So anyway, that's my shout out to BSTN. They have a variety of items. Um, I'm posting a bunch of stuff. Um, if there's anything that interests you, please, by all means, check out BSTN. On to the review. So let's dive into it. Let's start with the outsole. The outsole to these shoes is equipped with Reebok's proprietary rubber. It is in the configuration of a two-piece rubber outsole. It also has a TPU midfoot transition plate for stability and also for control as you walk or run, whichever one's your preference. The channels in the outsole are of varying depths, with the outside being a little more shallow than the inside. This helps on muddy surfaces while also dissipating downward pressure. It also helps to enhance the grip of the shoes. Yesterday, I took it for a brisk jog, and I have to admit, I like the scores in the outsole, which helps you articulate better and helps your feet flex with ease. Um, I would say that the outsole provides what the outsole is supposed to provide, grip, and durability. The rollout for the DMX cushioning system was pretty massive for Reebok when it did in fact come out with a lot of commercials with a lot of recognizable faces in multiple sports. It was a very innovative cushioning system coming from the company that gave us the Honeycomb and also Zigtech. The original version of the DMX had a plastic air chamber, but they replaced it with the DMX foam, which is a lighter EVA foam. It's actually molded in the form of pillars in the heel and the forefoot of the shoe. The shoe still offers a smooth cushion ride, thanks to the DMX foam pillars encased in the midsole. So it may not be visible, but the midsole does have the DMX foam pillars encased in it. The heel has a beefier crash pad, giving it more cushioning underneath your heel. While that's a vertical change, um, horizontally, they narrowed the heel just a little bit and also made the midfoot a little slimmer while expanding the forefoot. So what do these changes mean to you? Well, they help streamline the shoe, which helps you maximize your speed. The upper material is made out of textile with synthetic leather overlays and suede. It showcases the Reebok logo. It also has a textile lining for the inner, inner material. The tongue has moderate cushioning and it does not have a heel tab. 
The laces are exposed, as in there's no protection. So it's you'll be lacing it right over the suede. Also, it has the extra lace hole in case you want to make a runner's loop for a complete lockdown. After my brisk jog, what I liked about it was the synthetic material in the forefoot did not crease. Also, the suede that surrounds the lace loop at the very bottom provided extra structure and support. I did not experience any rubbing in the Achilles area, nor was there any slippage in the heel. The cushioning in the heel area was adequate. The tongue did not rub against the top of my foot, nor did I feel the laces. And best of all, there was no pinching in the forefoot from the material folding. So I read on Sneaker News that this shoe was being compared to the Nike Structure Triax in its day. I've never heard of that shoe. Um, but a contemporary shoe that this shoe reminds me of, that the Reebok Premier Road reminds me of, is the 2002 from New Balance. The only difference is uh, the 2002R is a softer shoe. It's a way more comfortable shoe, and you can feel it in touching it that the materials are more premium than that of the Reebok. So I would put it somewhere in between the 2002R and the 574, the 574 being a little less um, premium. The upper materials of the 574, um, the midsole foam and the engineering in the midsole is not close to that of the Reebok, but then at the same time, as I mentioned, the Reebok has the torsion control, the rubber, uh, the DMX foam, which comes close, but truth be told, the gel in the heel of the 2002R puts it above the top for me. The only sneakers in the Nike line of shoes that I may be able to compare to would probably be the Pegasus 83, uh, Pegasus 89, or maybe even the Air Max 1, but that'll be a review for another day. It was my pleasure reviewing this shoe for you. Um, personally, I'm going to definitely put in my rotation. I spent a lot of time in the Pegasus 83 um, all through 2022 and 2023, and this will serve as its perfect replacement. Thank you for watching. Take care.